so this is an exclusive video for Facebook followers, people who like my page on Facebook. This video will probably be released later on for YouTube users and, you know, the general or whatever. But for now, you guys get a sneak peek of how I made this wallpaper. It's actually going to be, it's pretty simple how I did it. Hopefully it doesn't take too long to explain because it's super simple technique. Uh, it's really just playing around with, you know, shapes and stuff. But let's go ahead and dive in and let's see what we can do here. So I'm actually going to make a 1920 by 1080 wallpaper only because that's the size of my resolution and I want to make this my wallpaper, right? So depending on the resolution size of your screen, you want to change these numbers. So then click OK. Cool. So now we have a blank slate, even if it's not white or whatever, don't worry about it. We're going to make a new layer right above this, even though we could do it on the background layer. It's, it's whatever. Go over here and click the gradient tool or press G on your keyboard. Make your foreground and background colors gray, okay? So I'm going to have kind of like a, a mid, a, just below mid gray, okay? More on the darker side. And then I'm also going to have a dark version of gray, which is way down here. And if you want the exact numbers, this is going to be all twos, okay? Write that down. And if you want this exact number, 6F, 6F, 6F. So those are my numbers. Gradient tool, make sure it's on radial gradient. Grab the middle. Hold shift so it's a straight line and grab out to about there. And this is going to make a big difference with your final uh, final graphic. But that's kind of like what I'm looking for. Just that nice gray gradient. We're going to make a new layer here. And I'm going to actually grab, press D. Or you can press this button right here to change my colors back to default black and white. I'm going to grab the rectangle shape tool. And I'm just going to make a rectangle about that size. I mean... It's not that big of a deal. Cool. And then what I like to do is make another rectangle up here. And I'm going to resize it to about that. And then about that. And I'm going to make another one. I'm, I'm holding Alt and clicking on it and dragging. So that automatically duplicates. T, Control T for transform. I make this one skinnier. So now I have kind of like layouts. Three different sizes. I mean, you can do this completely however you want. This is just my own workflow. So then I'm going to go auto select. So now whatever I select, it's actually going to select that shape, okay? And I'm just going to go ahead and put these to the side as reference. Grab this one. Alt, drag it out. Alt, drag it out. Alt, drag it out. And I can start dragging out from these points here. Okay, and this is kind of like the pattern that I was going for. Now, there is no absolute correct way to do this. I mean, this is, this is art, right? I mean, it's graphic art. There's no way... That I'm gonna tell you, oh, you're doing it wrong. Whatever looks good to you, okay? All I'm trying to go for here, so you can kind of see what I'm doing, is I'm going for a horizontal pattern. And I'm just kind of trying to make it look kind of randomized. So it's not all the same look. So I mean, just do something like that. So I have thicker parts, I have skinnier parts, some parts that stick out more than others. I'm going to be, you know, scaling things up and down. I could delete these. So that's my initial pattern right here, okay? It's comprised of, what, 25 different parts or so? Uh, oops, I didn't select some of it. Oh, there's a lot more up there. Okay, take down properties. So now I can see all of it. I'm going to select all these here. And I think that this looks a little bit too thick for me. So I'm going to go Control-T. And I'm going to scale this down like that. And, yeah, that's kind of like what I'm going for. Cool, so I have this, like, pattern thing going on here. This looks, I, I think it looks okay. So I'm going to grab all my rectangles here, all my shapes, and hit Control E. Okay, you can either do that or right click and merge shapes if you're horrible at doing shortcuts for some reason. So this is kind of the general idea of what I'm getting at. And then what I'm going to do is kind of bring it up here. And I'm going to, like we did before, duplicate by holding Alt and dragging down. But this time I'm going to go Control T, hold Shift. And rotate this around so it's gonna lock in what like five degree increments or so I don't know 15 degree increments we'll see and then I'm going to grab this and put it kind of at the bottom I can scale this up and move it over here and I'm just gonna kind of move it all around to get this like nice randomized pattern okay I don't want people to recognize certain parts of it I'm gonna rotate this around and I'm just going to kind of get like this kind of general thing there. Like that. Okay, so now I have a bunch of different layers here, as you can see. Okay, and all of it together makes that. Now, right now, it kind of looks like junk, I know. But 
hang in there. Here's the trick. The opacity is what makes this look really cool. So you can grab as many layers as you want, bring down the opacity some, doesn't matter which layers you actually select. This is supposed to kind of be a randomized look. So the more random you make it, the more camouflage-ish it looks. There is no right or wrong here, okay? As you can see, I'm not even clicking particular layers. I'm just kind of doing whatever. I'm not really looking at my layers. I'm looking more at the design and what it looks like. I think this corner up here is a little dark or too dark. So I'm going to go and kind of find which one it is. It's this bottom layer. So I'm going to go ahead and drag that down a bit. And that's kind of how you get that camo look. Now, depending on how thick you made your original pattern, the lines are going to be thicker. If you want them more fine, you make your lines skinnier. You make your lines more thin, your rectangle shapes more thin. Now, depending on how thick you made your pattern, the lines are going to be more thick. For example, here, I actually went, I think, a little bit horizontal as well. But, uh, you know, my lines are, I have a huge variation of thick and skinny lines, which worked out really great for this wallpaper. And in here, I mean, I have a pretty nice variation as well. See, so here's a nice thick square here, some nice thin ones over here. So it all just depends on how you make your original pattern and how you position them. But the main thing here is that they're all going to be kind of in this horizontal-ish look. All right, so now what I'm going to do is highlight all of those, right-click, and convert them to a smart object. If you convert them down like that with Control e they all go to the same tr uh, opacity setting to 32. So I don't want that. I want to keep that variation in color. So right-click, Smart Object, right-click, and Rasterize for the future. That's the camo look. Let's say you have a logo, kind of like me. I'm going to show you the complete tutorial, okay? So I'm going to grab my logo. I'm going to make a new layer, File, Place, grab my logo here. I think that's an okay size. I'm not going to resize it. There's my logo. I'm actually going to go change the layer style to overlay okay and hey look you can be done if you want that's totally up to you but what I'm actually going to do is change it up a bit I want it to be lighter in here in my logo than outside and it kind of looks flipped right now so what I'm gonna do is hit control J make sure my uh, this pattern layer is selected hit control J twice so now it gets really dark and the design looks pretty much crap right Hold control and, and click the thumbnail of your logo. And I'm going to go to the rectangle one, hit delete, rectangle two, hit delete. So basically it's only applying, watch if I see, see the shape of this logo, the shape of our selection. If I take off our logo, look, it's only, uh, it's deleting this part of these layers. So that's pretty cool, right? So now the outside is darker than our inside layer. And I know that this, let me show you. This layer is the only one showing on my logo, so I'm going to lower that just a bit because I don't want it to be too evident on my logo. And that looks pretty good. And then these two are too dark on the outside, so I'm just going to lower these a bit. Like that. So it kind of looks like you know, something like that. And there you go. That's the wallpaper. And I think I even added a drop shadow to my logo. So distance zero size and spread be careful when adding a drop shadow to anything if you take it too far uh, it can look really tacky i like using drop shadow honestly on a lot of my graphics but i think that the drop shadow needs to be used correctly if i if i freaking do this if i do this i mean that looks like junk you know i like to add a subtle look you know to the point where it's like oh you know what i didn't even know that i had a drop shadow until until you until I disabled it or until I really paid attention to it for example like this right here that's the drop shadow I would apply I have a three spread and 70 size so I mean it's not that significant but if I take it off on effects you know you can see oh yeah yeah he totally added a drop shadow but it's not once you look at the image a bit it kind of disappears but it just adds to the effect that's kind of how I like these drop shadows if you want to take this a step further you can make a new layer above everything fill this with black Okay, and I did that by making sure my foreground and background colors are black and white, holding Alt and pressing Delete. It'll automatically fill in the layer with my foreground color. And Control Delete will actually do the background color. So, anyways, I'm going to add a mask, grab a gradient, radial gradient, make sure it's back on black and white. I'm going to flip them, okay, to black and white like that. And then I'm just going to grab this gradient and give it like a vignette kind of look. Okay, you can make this look awesome I mean that right there looks pretty badass right there as well that's a whole nother wallpaper or you can drag it out a bit and give it like brighter in the middle and darker on the outside and if I disable this layer you'll actually see the difference of how much that vignette makes 
So there you go. That right there is the wallpaper. If you want to save it out, file, save as, save it what, to your desktop or whatever as a PNG or JPEG. And congratulations, you have made this digital camo wallpaper. Thank you guys for watching. I know this video was kind of lengthy, but if you think about it, it was really, really simple. We made a gradient background. We made our pattern uh, of those rectangles. We copied those rectangles, merged it down, copied those over a bit. It was super easy, actually, right? I mean, all we did was change the opacity on these layers. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. Remember to thumb up, comment, and subscribe.